What's up, creators and light shapers? The following is from our interview from Ryan McIntyre, DP, high-speed filmmaker, and owner of Cinespeed Productions. Ryan talks about the growing demand of ultra-high-speed content acquisition from high-end commercial customers, beyond military ballistics and scientific applications, to major international brands from ad campaigns to TV documentaries. With the latest high-speed cameras capable of frame rates for commercial or cinematic use well over 500,000 frames per second, Nanlux has proven to be uniquely qualified in the industry to meet the lighting demands for these types of productions better than any other brand. So let's get into the interview. Thanks for having me. I'm really uh, looking forward to talking about my work and uh, how Nanlux lights have changed uh, my whole industry. We've shot a lot of things um, with big brands like uh, Home Depot, for example, where they wanted to showcase their power tools, just uh, like saws cutting through wood and um, a stump grinder just demolishing stuff. And we've shot up to 80,000 frames a second just to show every little piece of wood coming off the chainsaw or every hour off a table saw or off a, we did a really cool shot of a um, concrete saw and how water was spraying everywhere. And as we were getting macro shots, we needed um, that frame rate. And um, yeah, it just made beautiful shots that not many people have seen before because to get at that frame rate with that quality was pretty recent. The camera came out and like the TMX, I think was 2020, 2019. Um, so it's pretty recent to get that frame rate and it's, you know, you can kind of see it at a thousand. It just kind of looks like things going everywhere, but actually be able to see every single blade going down and cutting through is kind of, it's pretty cool to see. I've used quite a bit of other lights. Like we've shot some HMI stuff and, um, you know, used the aperture lights and done, have a lot of issues with HMIs. You know, the shoots we've you know gone into where we need to shoot a couple thousand frames a second or even a thousand frames a second, we've always had to bring extra ballast because some of them flicker, some of them don't. It's just kind of a, a guessing game. And it's kind of nerve wracking, you know, going on set and hoping that you have the right ballast or you have a, have tested enough that it's gonna last the whole day. And when we use the apertures, we could just get out a thousand frames a second. Anything above that was definitely not usable. and. Um, that even, you know, sometimes I know people are like, you have to dim it. It's nice to be able to control the image and dim lights down. And with the aperture lights, we couldn't do that. And I know there are some app dates that might be able to fix that, but I, it was just a hassle that we had to be at hundred percent. And then you had to diffuse down from there. Where with the Evoke 1200, we could dim down to 1% and know it's not going to be flicker free. And it was dang solid. And, and even the 1200B, you know, knowing that we could dim down with different color and still get up to 25,000 frames a second easily, that you know, it would look great, wouldn't flicker, and we'd have so much more control and know that it was going to be the image that we need, um, needed to capture. No matter what you throw at them, knowing that I've tested them up to 875,000 with no flicker on the 1200, it's... It's just relaxing, you know, hey, like, whatever we need to shoot, we can shoot, and we have the output, and we know, like, hey, like, this is darn durable. Yeah, the, the light has been dropped, and it's, it's, it's taken a beating on some of this stuff, and it's been pretty awesome. Yeah, so another kind of use case we've done is some documentary stuff, um, not just for analyzing things, but we've done some uh, shoots with a Canon. Uh, we did a documentary for NHK out of Japan, and they were doing a Civil War documentary um, for their time period of when Japan went through um, their Civil War. And they wanted to an uh, compare two different type of cannons, one's a Napoleon and one is a Parrot. And in uh, Lancaster, PA, they have those cannons that they wanted to compare. And so we were shooting at those at 80,000 to 150,000 frames a second uh, to show exactly the type of flight and just beautiful images of how the cannons worked and how more powerful the Parrot was than the um, 
than Napoleon. Yeah, so that was really cool to be a part of, uh, you know, shoot that documentary and get some really pretty images for uh, that. And we, we used two evokes and the 1200C actually, uh, because we had to do a quick interview. So it was nice just to, to blast the 1200C just to give some fill light quickly and also just to light the, the cannon because um, the, the sun was coming in and out. So it was nice just to kind of not have to rely on it as much. Uh, you know, the sunlight, but also know, hey, uh, we're gonna get a pretty good images. You know, we had one evoke set up to light the cannon and one to, to light the, the cannonball as it was coming out. Um, and we used like mirrors and stuff to have the cannonball come directly towards camera and break the, the glass. But it was cool to see how the one is a rifled cannon, one's not. So you can see how the rifling uh, moved the cannon and how much faster it uh, sustained after even going through objects. But yeah, we were shooting it like, this, the main frame rate we were shooting is like 80,000 frames a second like that. And we, you couldn't have gone any slower. Like that was full resolution on, on the TMX 7510. And uh, everyone was really happy. We actually got to upscale that image to almost 4K. It was a 720p image and we used uh, Topaz AI and DaVinci Resolve. And it, it looks phenomenal. It was awesome. And we used the 26 degree modifier for the evokes to get the, the cannonball lit up. Uh, but the 1200C, you know, just to fill in the, an interview, we were, um, you know, standing right up to the side just to give a little bit of fill in uh, when the, especially when the sun went out, it was just kind of nice to have a little bit of control there. So the sun's nice to have because you can do a lot of control with, especially with mirrors and stuff, but ooh, you need way more light than the sun can provide usually at these frame rates because, um, you know, we've shot stuff in the 95 nanoseconds for the exposure time, uh, like flash bulbs, which we did at Cinegear and how the sun is, does nothing at that, at that exposure. It's pitch black. Recently after DPing a commercial, we were talking to some directors and how they're always very apprehensive of shooting phantom stuff from previous horror stories of using HMIs or just how much lights you need for simple shots and how, you know, it's, it's encouraging now to say like, hey, we can shoot this now. We can shoot phantom stuff. You can kind of breathe uh, uh, fresh air knowing that, hey, like, there's lights out there now, like the Evoke and the products that Nanlux has that are flicker free, that they're not crazy expensive, that they're reliable and that they're durable. And we can shoot Phantom stuff for with a lot less work and that a small, much smaller crew and a lot less costly, which is why a lot of people don't shoot Phantom stuff. And so it's, it's, it's definitely helping me out, not just because now I can shoot it, but it's helping directors and crews realize like, hey, we can actually shoot Phantom stuff now. So that's pretty cool.